In the midst of shutdown mania over the weekend, a photo emerged of a man, put this up on the screen, mm. who was pulling the fire alarm yes. in Cannon Office Building, which is one of those, for people who haven't been in D.C., that around the Capitol, there's all these House and Senate office buildings. Cannon is one of the House office buildings that like connect are adjacent to and by underground tunnels are connected to the Capitol. Okay, so this is one of those office buildings. And people immediately noticed, this man looks a lot like Congressman Jamal Bowman. Sure enough, it was Congressman Jamal Bowman pulling the fire alarm at a moment when I believe it was McCarthy had just brought this deal to the floor and Democrats were trying to scramble to delay the vote on this because they wanted to read what was in it. Hakeem Jeffries, I think, gave some long floor speech to try to delay so that people had a chance to go through what was in this thing and figure out whether they wanted to vote for it. So um, Jamal Bowman puts out a statement uh, copying to the fact that this is in fact him. Go ahead and put this up on the screen. And he gives this explanation. He says, I want to personally clear up confusion surrounding today's events. Today, as I was rushing to make a vote, I came to a door that is usually open for votes, but today would not open. I am embarrassed to admit that I activated the fire alarm, mistakenly thinking it would open the door. I regret to this, I regret this and sincerely apologize for any confusion this caused. Want to be very clear. This was not me in any way trying to delay any vote. It was the exact opposite. I was trying urgently to get to a vote, which I ultimately did and joined my colleagues in bipartisan effort to keep our government open. I also met after the vote with the sergeant at arms and the Capitol Police <laughs> at their request, explained what had happened. My hope is that no one will make more of this than it was. Uh, I'm working hard every day, including today, to do my job, to do it well and deliver for my constituents. Needless to say, you know, Trump is now demanding he be thrown in jail for triggering in the fire alarm. There's a whole freak out. He's being compared. Go ahead and put the Trump thing up on the screen, then we'll get the No one is above the law, Crystal. Trump uh. puts out on true social. Will Congressman <laughs> Jamal Bowman be prosecuted and imprisoned for very dangerously pulling and setting off the main fire alarm system in order to stop a congressional vote that was going on in D.C.? His egregious act is covered on tape. Horrible display of nerve <laughs> and criminality. Very dangerous obstruction of an official proceeding. The same is used against our J6 prisoners. Actually, his act may have been worse. He must suffer their same fate. When will his trial begin? Of oh. course, all of this is ridiculous nonsense because even in the worst interpretation of events, it's not like he was like trying to steal an election. Well, example, so. well, that's not what the J6 people were doing. That's not what they were charged with. Of course, they were they trying were, to do well, that. Well, they were charged with obstructing an official proceeding, which is uh, what uh, technically could be construed for a fire alarm. There's actually, Glenn Greenwald's done a great piece on this in terms of the legal precedents set about January 6th. I recommend people go um, and watch this because it's a very extraordinary interpretation of uh, case law, of which of course, people are not objecting to. Let's put that aside. I do not believe him for a second. There has been now, can we put the uh, picture please back up on the screen? So let's take a look at this very clearly and please keep it up. So <laughs> in front of you, you have the doors that are closed. There's a sign, I've seen this sign before, anybody on Capitol Hill has, which basically says this entrance is closed. You can't read it there. Where very clearly, and what people have pointed to, is that there is another sign elsewhere on Capitol Hill which talks about if you press the door handle, it's an emergency exit and the alarm will sound after three seconds. So Bowman revisionism is that he had seen that sign and had then decided to pull the fire alarm because he thought that it would then trigger the door. Now, that is stupid on its face, but as you can see very clearly in this photo, there is no, I repeat, no sign, anything about alarms, alarm sounding after three seconds, that is at another door in the Capitol. <laughs> there is simply no conceivable world in which pulling a fire alarm could be construed as being allowed to open the door. Now, do I believe he was doing it in order to delay the vote? I actually have a contrary view. I think that he was terrified of missing the vote. Right. And so instead of delaying the vote for democratic processes, I think he pulled the fire alarm so that he could delay the vote, so that he could get to the floor, so that he could then participate in the vote. So it wasn't some grand evil plan in terms of like stopping uh, the vote so that he could vote against it or hold it up. It was simply so that he did not miss, miss the vote. said vote. But that doesn't make sense. For his own personal. What? So here's yeah. the part of the, okay, so unpopular opinion. I believe Jamal Bowman. Well, then you and just believe why. he's an idiot. Because, There's well, no way. Okay, yeah. that could be, right? Okay. That could be. <laughs> well, okay. Um, <laughs> like, but 
listen, it doesn't make, if you're trying to delay a vote that's happening in the U.S. Capitol, right. why are you pulling a fire alarm in a different freaking building? Well, that okay, doesn't make any sense. Let's explain it. That though, makes no in sense. In terms of geography. So we got the Capitol behind us. This is what the Capitol looks like. So I got to orient myself. Uh, the House side would be over here. It would be on this side. Now, for those who don't know, this happened in the Cannon Office Building, which is the closest office building to the U.S. Capitol. You can basically see it through the door of where his office is. Right here, like I said, on this side for people who are watching, it would basically be but that's like, like, right over. That it's the closest be, one. That would be like if I was trying to avoid doing the show and yeah. I pulled the fire alarm in the next door apartment building. Right. Like that would be stupid. That wouldn't make any sense. But then, well, what if they so were owned by the same sense. people? What if they were owned by the same people and there was some into it? But it's not like that's, they're that's, discrete buildings. They right? are like, discrete buildings. Well, but, but, they're but, connected but. by an underground tunnel. <laughs> Lots of buildings are connected by underground tunnels. Like go to yeah. Minnesota and you'll see this all the time. They are separate right. buildings. Yeah. So if I'm trying to delay a vote over here, I would pull the fire alarm over here if I'm trying to obstruct an official government proceeding or whatever. So that explanation doesn't make any sense to me. And in general, I always feel like the most likely explanation is human failure is and incompetence. Dumbest? That Maybe. is usually Maybe. what's going on versus a nefarious plot. Uh, my personal favorite contribution to this discourse is, uh, let's put E4, or sorry, E5, please, up on the screen, is, uh, for those that don't know, Bowman is actually a former high school principal. Um, and at his former school, the Cornerstone Academy for Social Action, here is how they punish kids. School-initiated consequence will include a suspension for 10 days with a contract, level five, and then level six, long-term suspension and or expulsion. So, Crystal, you have children who are currently in school, so yeah. I don't know. When I was a kid, it was a very big deal to pull the fire. Yeah, you can't. Uh, yeah. You can't be pulling my fire. And, and that was like a cardinal sin. Um, I, I, I don't know if that's still the case um, inside of schools in terms of uh, pulling the fire alarm. Somebody did actually do it, uh, I think, whenever I was in high school, and they got into very big trouble. So yeah. uh, I, I'm assuming that they still have these uh, procedures which are in place. And that's what, to me, makes it so unbelievable. How many dumbass state-mandated drills does the man have to do about fire drills and fire alarm? <laughs> like, you don't know that the fire, it's, it says fire on it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's big and it's red. It doesn't open the door. It, in no scenario does it open the door. Okay, so, but I, I know signs yeah. are, do not appear on yeah. the door, but that sign is very confusing. But that's not on that door. I, it's in a different Maybe door. it's like yeah. on the wall or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go down. I'm gonna drag my ass down. There <laughs> We're gonna do some investigative thing. reporting yeah. into the situation. I honestly might have a friend go through with the camera. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, but you yeah. have to find these specific doors. And also, they said that normally these doors are open. That's true. That is true. And so they maybe sometimes have the signs up, and sometimes they don't. Anyway, I guess for me, none of the various explanations make a lot of sense, and so I just default on the side of like, oh, somebody just doing something stupid because well, sometimes human beings just do stuff that's. I think we stupid. need a thorough investigation. Personally, uh, no one is above the law. No one is above the law. <laughs> hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.